hello in this tutorial I would like to show you how to create a fake movie poster in Photoshop uh, it's basically a simple manipulation and I will show you how I created the title here and how I added the credits and that kind of things but uh, the manipulation uh, itself it's quite easy I just use a few adjustment layers and a couple of stock images and well I uh, hope you will like the tutorial and let's start So, um, we will start with the background image. On my website you will find the resources that you need for uh, this tutorial. There are all free images that I use for this, so you should uh, be able to find them. And we will start with the background image. So I'm going to open my stock folder, and this is the image that we're going to start with. Uh, I got this image from unsplash.com, I'm pretty sure, but I cannot find, I cannot find it because I didn't uh, save it on my favorites, so I cannot... Uh, find it. I'll give you the link to download it from my website, but uh, hopefully I can find the link But for now, I'll just uh, put it on my website so you can follow the tutorial I I will use the same canvas size uh, The same size as the image 2500 by 3400 uh, pixels and Right away the next thing that I'm gonna add is the woman um, I already extracted this from the background. It's pretty easy. This image is from deviantart.com uh, it's on white background, so it's easy to uh, remove the background and you can see I left some space around the hair Because we're gonna use the technique to remove this white and leave all the details there on the hair because it's difficult to create the, a Mask there, so we're gonna leave it like that. Just remove everything except this area around the hair And well, this is our model and I'm gonna drag it right over my canvas here And I'm gonna close this document and I will name this layer woman and I'm gonna drag her down I'm gonna leave the same size and I'm gonna put her right to about here let's see the original image uh, I'm gonna zoom in a bit and yeah okay about here now uh, we have to create a copy of the woman so I'm gonna press ctrl command J and I'm gonna name this uh, woman hair and I'm gonna drag it under the original and I'm going to change the blend mode of this, the woman here, which is on the bottom. I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. And if I zoom in at 100%, you will see that this part over here on, on the hair is gone. If it's if you still see some of the old background, use levels with Control Command A L, sorry, and just move this slider towards the left, and you will see that the white background will go away. Now I'm going to reactivate the woman layer, make sure you don't move them, if necessary just select both of them and link them with, can, with right click and choose link layers and that way when you move one of them they will both move at the same time. And now on the woman I'm going to create a layer mask and I'm going to use a soft brush and I'm going to paint with black to remove this over here. I'm going to deactivate my transfer because I'm using the, the graphics tablet and just remove that part and that way you will reveal the hair which is underneath with the multiply blend mode and this is a really cool technique to keep dark hair with white background and keep all the details without complicated masks you can see I'm not I'm just brushing here uh, without caring too much about the image so this is the simplest uh, technique you can get and we keep all the hair as you can see Great, now we have the woman and the next thing that I want to do is make some adjustments to her because I want to blend her a bit better with uh, with the background. And the adjustments that I have are first the color balance and of course clipped to the woman layer. And I'm going to give you the settings that I have. I'll start with the shadows and for the shadows I have 5, 0 and 9. And after I'm done with this I'm going to tell you why I'm using the settings. Minus f for the midtones minus five, nine and eight, and for the highlights, I'll use minus three, two and zero. Okay, um, I'll keep the uh, preserved luminosity, and let me show you the before and after. What I did is I added. If you take a look at the shadows, um, I added here on the shadows. I added a bit of. Um, of red that's why it's set on positive and some blue 
and on the mid tones I added more uh, cyan and also some blue and some green because the uh, dominant colors here on the background image are the cyan and the green and I wanted to keep a bit some of that uh, color on the woman as well here again on the highlights uh, you can see the woman is pretty well lit I pretty much sure they used at least two flashes for this and we have minus three so more cyan on the highlights and also a bit more of green uh, on the highlights as well so that's how I uh, made this I've, I'm seeing some masking problems around here I'm gonna zoom in a bit and on this layer mask where I painted the hair I'm gonna paint out this area over here and oops this area over here you have to be careful here I'm doing it a bit quick and here as well these are just masking problems uh, you have to be careful with this I'm gonna use a harder brush and get rid of these areas Mistakes like this will make your artworks look like a beginner's job, so take your time and deal with these details. Uh, anyways, I did it really quick, but uh, I just wanted to point that out. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is add another adjustment, and this time I'm going to add a photo filter on top of the color balance. So let's add a photo filter, of course clipped to the color balance. And I'm going to use the cyan photo filter at uh, 25% preserve, uh, preserve luminosity on and I'm going to change the blend mode to color and I will leave the opacity to 50% great now next I'm going to add another adjustment a vibrance if you don't have vibrance just use saturation hue saturation and I decreased the saturation to minus 11 because the image was uh, kind of too saturated I think it looks better with uh, this adjustment. Next I wanted to add a bit of depth and I knew that here on the bottom I would have the credits and, uh, and everything so I added some plants which I blurred and you can use stock images from DeviantArt you can you can search for PNG plants and you'll find lots of them uh, even Photoshop if you go here to filter uh, if you choose render you can choose um, and I'm gonna show you that filter uh, render you can choose three and here you can choose what kind of plants you want you have bushes you have pretty much everything you want for example this could work I'm gonna click OK and just for just for you to see how you can do this put it right there and then go to filter blur gallery and choose field blur and just blur this a bit and click OK and this will um, add more depth uh, and create a sense of uh, depth to your image and probably move it like that over there uh, on the original here I used plants using the pixel squid plugin which I explained on the previous tutorial how to use when I made the skull island um, tutorial so uh, you could use this plugin if you want and add the 3d plants over there and then press ctrl command F to reapply the filter again I'm gonna click OK and well, I'm gonna duplicate this now and put it right over there and then just uh, duplicate this one as well and put it over here and that's pretty much it I did it really quick I don't want to spend time with this but just add some plants there and um, blur them and this will give you a bit of uh, a bit of depth uh, to your to your image and next I created the title and for the title I used a font first let's add a new layer and let's create the title well the title box the text box over here and let's type hunter here and the font that I used for this is the laundry condensed uh, italic and here um, I added some layer styles to this of course you can put edit any title that you want but uh, I just want to show you how I how I created the styles so for the title I have the bevel and emboss and I have the uh, I set this to inner bevel chisel hard depth 100% and size 1 pixel 
angle 59 percent as i can see the settings are the same that i that i used last time so that's why i have the settings here on the highlight mode i have it to screen uh, color white and opacity 89 percent and the shadow mode to multiply black and opacity 61 percent uh, the reason why i use the settings is because i just want i want to have a slight 3d effect on it and that's why I used this and I also used I think I used some drop shadow with distance 1 and size 0 uh, no, distance 2 let's see how that looks it doesn't look bad but uh, well, we'll see if we leave it here or not I'm gonna click OK and next I added a texture on top of this so I'm gonna open my stock folder and this is the texture that I used you can if you don't like these things over here you can um, use the clone stamp tool or the patch tool. Let's use the patch tool. Great, now I'm going to copy this texture and I want to copy it and close this. Don't save. Paste with Control V and clip it to the Hunter text layer. And of course, I have to one. I have to make it smaller because it's way too big. And on top of that, uh, well, I want this scratches to be a little smaller. And I also want this dirt green, dirty texture to to be there present on the text. And if you want, you can also sharpen this a bit. If you think it's not sharp enough, you can go to filter sharpen and choose um, sharpen. Uh, with that's that's enough. And I'm gonna put it right there. One other thing that I did is I added an arrow uh, behind this just uh, to have an element of design there. Uh, I wanted to have the, the, the arrow passing through the text and create a sort of a, an explosion or um, debris there, but uh, I wanted to keep it simple. So again, I used um, the Pixel Squid plugin for that. Um, if you want, I'll give you the links to, to this object if you want, if you don't have this plugin installed, but uh, uh, it's really handy to have it here because you can spin the objects over here, which is great. And I'm gonna make this smaller, about that small. I'm gonna put it over over there. And now I'm going to select. Well, first I have to rasterize it because this plugin adds it as a smart object. And I'm gonna crop this part. Right click and choose layer via cut. And I'm gonna move it right over there to the left right there and now I will select both of them and both these layers and put them behind the hunter text and now I'm gonna duplicate this part over here with control command J and I'm gonna move it over there and now just uh, get rid of this part the reason why I cut it uh, I have to move it a bit lower the reason why I cut it right here is because that way I can mask any mismatch of this, uh, of the sizes or anything, and uh, that's why I did it. Okay, so now we have the text. Now we, we need the second part. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate this, and I'm gonna type the and make it smaller. And let's put it right over there. If you want, you can add some words here, like I don't know the the woman hunter or the uh, the bloody hunter, whatever you want. Uh, if you want to fill this space in, and that's pretty much it. Uh, we will take care of the credits and everything after we make the final adjustments. So let's go ahead and make the final adjustments. Let's minimize everything here, and. Let's create a, a new layer and create a group, which we will name Adjustments. And the first adjustment that I created is a gradient map. So let's add a gradient map and we have to use the photographic toning gradients. Let's click OK. And this, the preset that I used is the sepia blue one. So let's look for that sepia blue one over here. And I changed the blend mode of this to color. This will warm up a bit the image, but I'm going to change the opacity to just 20%. And combined with the cyan and the green, you can see it gives this really 
a bit of unsaturated tone, but uh, something a bit warmer and kind of looks it more cinematic, I think. It looks pretty nice. Then a curves adjustment. And here with the curves, I made some uh, changes on the channels. For the blue, I just changed the, the bottom left point to an input zero and output five, uh, just to add a bit of blue on the on the shadows. And on the highlights, some a bit of yellow, not much. I changed this to 251. Uh, just a slight warming effect on the image. On the green channel, I have two points. Uh, the first one with input 72, and the second with an out, well, and an output of 67, and the second point with an input of 173, and an output of 172. The reason why I did this is because I wanted to add more, more magenta. You can see when you drag this down, you cr you add more magenta on this part of the of the histogram on the on the shadows. Okay, so I wanted to add more. Uh, magenta on the shadows and well let's add the point again great now on the reds I made the, just a really small change on the top on highlights here and I changed the input of this to 250 so I added a bit more of red on the on the highlights see that there the next adjustment is uh, two color lookups the first one is on the on the abstract here cobalt carmine and i set it on normal but, uh, but the opacity at 20 percent this will make a kind of a red tone will give the image a red tone and then another color lookup this time with the preset foggy night let's see if i can find it right over here and i dropped the opacity to 20 percent how I came up with this adjustment, just a trial and error until I found uh, the combination that I liked and I wanted a bit of an unsaturated effect and I didn't want to have the true colors, you can see the red, the greens are not really green there and that's uh, the kind of effect I wanted to have and that's pretty much it. The next thing that I did, um, well uh, here on the, one other thing that I did is I used uh, some brushes that I have for flying birds. Uh, let's create a new document. I forgot to add that. A new layer behind the below the adjustments. And I'm going to open my flying birds brushes. Okay, and uh, I'm going to use this ones over here, but I have to make it smaller. And the color that I will use, I will sample it from this forest over there. Uh, it's, they're too black. Uh, I'm going to make... I'm going to zoom in a bit and make the brush a bit smaller. I'm going to sample a brighter tone. And I'm going to do something like that. And now I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to clip it to the bird's layer. And with a soft brush, with a round soft brush, I'm going to create a, a glow over there. You'll see that in a second. With white, I'm going to make the brush really big. And I will paint not over the birds, but away from them, like that. And uh, first I have to make sure that I have, okay, that I have the pen pressure off. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna make the brush even bigger. Okay, great. And this creates this um, really soft um, glow over the birds there, which is nice, uh, kind of a nice light effect there and one other thing that i want to do is enhance the eyes of the woman so i'm going to create a new layer i'm going to set the blend mode to overlay and i'm going to fill with overlay neutral color 50 percent gray and i'm going to click ok i'm going to name this eyes because i want to enhance the eyes of the model with the dodge and burn tool so you can see this is the only retouch i made uh, to the woman. So I'm going to dodge right over here. I'm going to dodge her eyes to make them stand out a little more. They're a bit too dark, I think, so I think we can make them stand out just a bit more. Like that. And I'm going to switch now to the burn tool. And I'm going to burn the edges like so. And we're done. I'm gonna duplicate this for a stronger effect. And see this? I'm gonna set this to soft light. Or maybe overlay it stronger, okay. 
And one other thing that I wanted to add is some particles over here. And I'm gonna use a uh, stock image that I have. This is the pack that I use from Best Pixels. Um, from Best Pixel, this is the, I don't know if which one I use. I think it's this one. Uh, it's a PNG pack. I think these are renders uh, from 3D. Uh, yeah, this one. It's not a big deal, but uh, it's enough for what we want. And I'm going to blur this just a bit with Gaussian blur. Uh, with just one pixel, it's enough. And probably duplicate the layer for a stronger effect. And that way we have this sort of uh, uh, particles over there. And then last thing is camera raw settings. I'm gonna create a stamp with Shift, Alt, Command and E. And I'm gonna turn this into a smart object just in case. And if you don't have cam, if you cannot use camera raw as a filter, uh, in Photoshop CC you can do it, but in previous versions like Photoshop CS5 or CS6 or CS, uh, well, any CS version, you cannot do this. And if you wanna do that, what you have to do is save, save this image as it is, as a TIFF file or JPEG, and go to Photoshop's uh, preferences. And here where it says camera raw, change, uh, on JPEG and TIFF, save, um, change it to automatically open all supported JPEGs or all supported TIFFs and that's it. And when you open the image back in Photoshop, you will open Camera Raw and you will you will get the same uh, view that I have here. And the settings that I have here, let me take a look at my notes here. I changed the tint a bit to minus five to add a, a bit of a green uh, uh, tint to the image. I changed the exp exposure to 0 0.15, slightly uh, exposed. Maybe the highlights drop them uh, just a bit. The clarity to minus 8, vibrance to 34, this will enhance uh, some colors, and the saturation to minus 19. And then I went to the split tone, it's something that I like to use. And on the highlights I have uh, 35 and saturation to 9. And on the shadows, 204 for the hue and 11 for the saturation. And I changed the balance to minus 12. So I added more um, blue tones than yellows. And then a simple... Um, vignetting with uh, settings minus 18 and then the midpoint to 18 as well roundness I didn't touch it and uh, feather to 9 to 90 and highlights to 100% we don't want to affect uh, the brightest highlights and that's it that's how I created this uh, manipulation I'm gonna click OK and you'll see the before and after we took away some of the magenta I think it was too much and reds and we added more green tones and uh, we got this result in order to make the credits I used a font called steel tongues I think it was the name let me search for it yeah steel tongues regular and this is a cool uh, font I'm gonna drag here the box where my credits will be right over there. It's a cool font because um, all you need to do is press some keys. For example, if I type the bracket key, let's uh, use a smaller font size. For example, if I type the bracket key, you can see you get with music from, and then I put a random name here. Uh, let's say, for example, my name. Then if you want to add some something else, for example, if I type the question mark, I get this assistant to, to chief editor, I'm going to type PSD box and well, uh, so on. And that's how I added this. But instead of using the white color, I used uh, um, some darker tone like this, I think I used. And then I also added some styles. I added some drop shadow with distance one and well, let's see, an angle of 120 degrees, distance one, and size zero, and you get a, a bit of a contour, and this will make the text stand out a little more on some areas. And you fill this with whatever credits you want. What I'm going to do is just drag this uh, to my document from here. 
with the move tool I'm gonna drag everything right over here and drop it right here and have something like this the icons here the DVD icon everything here it's from the same font so uh, just type weird characters until you, you get them if you download the font on the link that I have on that I put on my website you'll find a list with the codes that you need to uh, um, type if you want to get uh, a certain logo type so that's it this is how I created this manipulation I hope you enjoyed it I hope it will give you some ideas for your own movie posters so that's it for today I'm Andre from PSD box and we'll see you on the next tutorial